Chapter 34 and verse 9. A man that hath traveled knoweth many things, and he that hath much experience will declare wisdom. He that hath no experience knoweth little, but he that hath traveled is full of prudence. When I traveled, I saw many things, and I understand more than I can express. 6 and verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. down the middle of the week it's the middle of the day middle of the week so you know we're smack down in the middle I want to welcome all our listeners to PJD2 radio and PJD3 FM radio on 102.7 FM and all of our viewers viewing us on WTN cable TV Carib channel 10 I hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday and today my program is just going to make you more wonderful more blessed because I have two gentlemen with me and it has been my pleasure to meet them. And I have Captain Isaac here with me and Bishop Nathaniel. Yes, they sir. are my guests today. And gentlemen, let me ask you first of all, well, let me welcome you to the program. Wish you all the best for 2016. Thank you. And ask you to introduce yourself and tell me where you're from and what's your mission. Okay. okay. Uh, my name is Captain Isaac. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And my mission is to, to assist Bishop Nathaniel in raising up the lost tribes of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, which are scattered on the island of St. Martin. Okay. Yes, exactly. I'm Bishop Nathaniel. And if your listeners and viewers would like more information on us, our website is www.israelunite.org, or you can call us back in the States at 718-303-9655. Okay. Yes, sir. And, okay, let's go straight into the program. Here we go. It's like the captain just said, Captain Isaac, it's to find the lost, did, did you use the word lost, tribes yes. of Israel? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, lost. So we're going to have to relocate them. Find exactly. Them. How, I'm going to help you with that. Give me Matthew 15, uh, I believe it's verse 24, because Jesus Christ, the Savior, 
Okay, he used the term lost. And many times people overlook that term. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he said it specifically and with purpose. Read that. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the lost sheep, meaning they would be lost to who they are, their identity, their culture, things, so forth and so on. Most people don't realize that during the time of Christ when he walked Jerusalem, you had three tribes. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the bulk. The rest of them had already left Jerusalem. That's why you re rarely hear about uh, Reuben, Gad, Naphtali. You don't read about them in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, the bulk of them had left. There were small remnants th left behind in John 4, the woman of the well, the woman of Samaria. She was of the tribe of Ephraim. When you said they left, where did they left? To, to, the, the to this side of the world, yes. Okay. Okay. To this to what we call today the Americas. Yeah, now, that's the world. Right. Now, when, when we ask our people, okay, give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. I'm going to explain loss because that word is a phenomenon to black people. For example, if I ask you, what is your racial identity? You may give me one answer. Mm -hmm. I may ask the young lady in here. She may give me a different answer unless she hears what you said. Mm -hmm. or if, and we've done this experiment from city to city, state to state, country to country. Our people are confused. Though, when I say our people, I mean those who went into slavery mm -hmm. under the hand of America, Britain, the Dutch, the Danish, Germany, whatever. Spanish. Spanish. Mm -hmm. We are confused. Read Isaiah 1 and 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner. So God's speaking to Isaiah about the Israelites. He said, an ox, which is a dumb animal, he knows his owner. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the ass his master's crib. God con 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 continues on. He said, an ass, which is another dumb animal, he knows his master's crib. He knows where he belongs, his, where he lives. Go ahead. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So in the last days, the Israelites would not know who they are. These are all prophetic. Mm -hmm. We would not know. So if, that's why we understand prophetically, bibli with bibliography, the blacks that went into slavery from 1492 on up, we are the biblical tribes of Israel. That's who we are. And we can prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt, which we shall begin to do. You with okay. me? Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm anxious for this. Because, yes, sir. Uh, Deuteronomy. This is, this is all new. Oh, yeah. It's very new. Christ said, when this gospel shall be preached throughout all the world, then shall the end come. The true gospel has never been preached. We have been deceived. Christ said, take heed, in Matthew 24, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yep. You used the word earlier to us. You said, let's make sure that you're not sinister. Mm -hmm. Remember that term? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something about Christianity. Mm -hmm. Christianity, which is all our religions, it's sinister. What do you mean by that? When we examine the image of Christ, the white image of Christ is what I'm referring to, mm -hmm. There's no biblical evidence that he looked like that. Not one pastor can ever prove that he looks like that. Mm -hmm. Yet we all follow. How did we become Christians historically? When the Spanish came, they said they were Christians. And they enslaved us, beat us, raped our mothers, daughters, and wives, and forced Christianity on us. Forced us to worship the white image of Jesus. That's if anyone has done any little bit of reading history, you can read that. Mm -hmm. Sinister, you have yet to understand sinister. I've told many people, when you examine the most bloodiest religion on the world today, it is Christianity, mm -hmm. followed by Islam, because those two religions destroyed us. Now, I'm gonna go back to the point. Who are we? Because the Bible names all races. But if I ask you, point to your race in the Bible, you won't be able to do it. No. <laughs> Nobody can do it except the Israelites. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, please. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now Moses is speaking to the Israelites. We had just left Africa, Egypt. We were now in the wilderness. Moses warns the 12 tribes, if you break God's laws, these are the curses that will fall upon you. Let's read some of these curses. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters 
shall be given unto another people. Were our sons and daughters given to another people historically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, come on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Our eyes looked and fail with longing for our sons and our daughters all day long. Come on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No might means no economic might, no military might to reunite our nation. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. That verse right there, to become an astonishment, proverb, and byword, means you would be called something else. You would no longer be called Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, or Israel. You would be called African American, Haitian, Guyanese. Our nationalities would be changed. This is what Moses is telling us would happen to us. Where our nationalities changed in slavery? Yeah. You better believe it. Yeah. And not only that, with that verse, our last names, our, our surnames would change. Our father is Israel, which is Jacob. All of us had one father. When we went into slavery, they gave one, the last surname Thomas, the last name Ray, the last name Brown, Dunbar. We all got these last names. And where did those names come from? Yeah, from, from Europe, from England. Right, from the slave masters. Yeah. They put their names on us and they branded their names in our backs so that they would know whose slave belonged to who. Yeah. Now today we are so prideful. I'm from the Dunbar family. You've got to be kidding me. Are you kidding me? They divided us up nationally. Then what else did they do? They gave us religions. Mm -hmm. You may call yourself Episcopalian. He may say he's Roman Catholic. He may say he's Baptist. Now we fight with each other. We, there's no unity now. Yeah. This has been a conspiracy. But watch this. I'm going to prove it further. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. What's that word? Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Hold that word enemies right there. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. What are we reading? The Bible. Go ahead. In hunger. You got to serve your enemy if you want food. And in thirst. Water. And in nakedness. If you want clothes. For some nice clothes you got, you got to serve. You had to work nine to five. Back during uh, the 1450s, it was hard bondage. Now it's a little easier, but you're still working. Yeah. Go ahead. And in want of all things. Watch this. And he, he, which is your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Historically, do we have yokes of iron on our necks? Yeah, yeah. This is history. We learn basic history in school, but in our churches, they will never teach this to us. Now, let me ask you this. How did the blacks get to St. Martin over here? How did we get here? On what transportation? Uh, on slave ships. Slave ships. Let's see if that's in the Bible. Jump down to verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. The word Egypt means bondage. I just want to make your listeners mm -hmm. understand. Egypt means bondage. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With what? With ships. Let's see what kind of ships he's talking about, Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. You wouldn't see your identity or homeland no more again. Let's see what happens when we got off those slave ships. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Were we sold to our enemies? You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> we were sold to our enemies. What are we reading? The Bible. The Holy Bible. The greatest history book on the earth. Wait, 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 hold on. This is Deuteronomy, right? Yes. Old Testament. That's right. And here God is already talking about ships. That's right. Exactly. Already talking about ships. Letting you know, this is the greatest prophetic book on the earth. No other book can stand to this. Everything in this book is true. And this was written 3,000 years ago, but did not come to pass until the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s. We did not believe nothing Moses said. Moses said, all right, you're going to find out. You and your children are going to listen. Because we were rebellious when we left Egypt. We were so happy, and we thought we was the, the, the shizzle. <laughs> Wait, we didn't finish that verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, slave men, and bondwomen, slave women. And no man shall buy you. When it says no man shall buy you, it means no man shall save you. You had great black leaders, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. We even had great females, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, who tried to help us and deliver us from captivity. They failed. They failed. There's only one savior. 
You understand that? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ? Let me ask you that. He came to save us. He came to save us. From what? Oh, sin, from um, bondage. From I, you say, I like what you said from sin. You know why I like that? Because that is the generic answer from that churches teach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They say Jesus came to save from sin. But it's more specific. Luke, the New Testament tells you, Luke 1, verse 70 and 71. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Remember I told you to hold that word enemies? Yeah. It didn't change from the time of Moses to the time of Christ. The same enemies back that Moses prophetically was speaking of is mentioned here in the New Testament. Read it again. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's what salvation is about. Saving you from your enemies and from all those that hate you. But in Christianity, we have the mindset, I'm going to speak about Christians because we were all Christians at one time. Mm -hmm. We said, who's the enemy? The devil. What about enemies on earth? No, 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 no enemies on earth. So who put you on slave ships? Nobody wants to be. <laughs> Did your friend put you there? You know, who put yokes of iron on you? Did your friends do that? Who changed your racial identity? Did your friends do that? Did the spiritual demon come down and go, boo, put a yoke of iron on his neck? The very people that we love so dear is the one the Bible's talking about. The man that feeds us, clothes us, takes care of us, brings tourist, tourism to the island. The one we tip, tip, tip. That is the same man that put you in bondage, that changed your identity, that raped your mothers and fathers. You understand this? And that's who Jesus came to save us from. Yes. Now, watch this. What does Jesus look like? What do you think he looks like? Definitely not that picture of my, that Michelangelo drew. Ah, but you know what? In most churches, that image is in there. My mama's church, that picture's there. My mother will not, not let me take that down. I said, Ma, this is not Jesus. You better not touch that picture, boy. I'll beat you down. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. Indoctrinated. Right. So, what does the Bible say Christ looked like? Revelation, chapter 1 and 1, real quick. Verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The word revelation means the revealing. Jump down to verse 14 yeah. so we can get to the point. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Woolly hair. It's like your hair. You got woolly hair. I got woolly hair. He got woolly hair. When he had any. Yeah, when he had some. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, it doesn't say straight and stringy. It says woolly. You understand yeah. that? Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Fully white. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So that part right there confuses some people. They go, what does, the, what does that mean? Get Genesis 49. You, you got to read the Bible. The Bible's written like a puzzle. What you don't understand in one chapter, another chapter will explain. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Genesis, call it. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Moses was proph prophesying about the Messiah from the tribe of Judah, which was mm -hmm. for to come. He said his eyes shall be red with wine. So when we go back now, read about his eyes again, whole verse. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Why were his eyes as a flame of fire? Because they were red. Why? From, like wine? Or? Yeah, for cause of drinking wine. Go ahead, watch this part. And his feet. Now he looks down at Jesus Christ's feet. Like unto fine brass. Fine brass is brown. Yeah. But watch this. As if they burned in a furnace. If you burn brown brass in a furnace, what color would it get? It gets even browner. That's right, black. Yeah. Looks like me, looks like you, looks like him, looks like him, looks like him. Jesus Christ is described in the Bible. You mean to tell me these ministers that go to theology school never read this? Our little ignorant brothers, we, are, we can read this and see? I want you to understand the Spirit of God is dealing with us. He's not dealing with the theology schools. Who established these churches of theology? All those same white people. The same ones that destroyed you and I. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24. Christ warned us. So people say, oh, it does not matter. If it didn't matter, why did Christ tell John, write, what, write down what you see? John starts at Christ's hair and he begins to describe him. If it didn't matter, why he say it's important? Put it in there. I'm going to show you why it's important. Matthew 24, verse 4. Watch this. Matthew 24 and verse 4. 
And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Have we been deceived? On a little bit we've read is proof we've all been deceived. Go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. When the Spanish came, they said they are Christians. They had the false image of Jesus. They beat the slaves and the native Indians and forced them to worship the image. When we came over, they beat it into us, gave us one day of worship on Sunday. Mm. They said, you will learn to go to Sunday school. You will learn the true image of Jesus. And we bowed and we worshiped unto this day. And now it's hard to break out people from the bondage, yeah. but it shall be done because destruction is soon to come. What you see happening in Syria, Iraq, Iran, Paris, the bombings, it's going to Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America. Let me say it again. Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America. Hey, don't cut me off. <laughs> Will be destroyed, according to Revelation 18. Mm. Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18. You should have some questions. You ever see this book before? Babylon. From Babylon Timbuktu. to Timbuktu. I want you I want you readers to check it out. There's a camera right there. Uh, there you go, there you go. From Babylon to Timbuktu. It was written by an author named Rudolf R. Windsor. If you can find me the part about the slave market, I think I put it in the, in the front there if you don't know where it is. He wrote something about the biblical Jews, and it was very, very astounding. Okay, and, and as soon as Captain Isaac gets it, it's going to shock you. Okay, I should have it highlighted. Yep, yep, you got it? Yes, this is the book From Babylon to Timbuktu, written by Rudolf R. Windsor. Page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. One million Jews fled into Africa. <laughs> fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. You hear what he wrote? The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. When we read about the Jews in the Bible, you're reading about yourself and don't realize it, okay? Now, you may ask yourself, well, if we're the Jews, who's the white man in Israel who says he's a Jew? Do you know who he is? Yeah. Who is he? No, I, I, want, I was hoping you would tell me. Because <laughs> that's what I'm wondering. Then, then who was the so-called white Jew? Exactly. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, Jesus Christ tells you because during the time of Christ you read about King Herod yeah King Herod was a Roman and I do mean and he was set up as king of Judea he had a whole family line Antipater you had Berenice you had Agrippa you had Felix but Christ spoke about them in Revelation 2 9 watch what he says about us first then he addresses them the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich. We are rich because all the promises in the Bible pertain to us. And I know the blasphemy. Here come, I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews and are not. They're not. But are the synagogue of Satan. Ooh. Ooh. You can hear a pin drop. Christ said they are the synagogue of Satan. Now you may say, but that's sinister. That's Bible. We've never been taught nothing in this Bible. All we have been taught by Christianity is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not even realizing that the word world has several meanings. The word world can mean the universe, it can mean the planet, or it can mean a particular group of people having common interests, aims, and goals. But we've been taught it means everybody. Hmm. Let me ask you this now. I feel like I'm the host. You <laughs> no, 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 you go right ahead. Go right ahead. The, every, every origin, every race is mentioned in the Bible. The so-called white man, our friendly neighborhood white man, who we all love so much, who destroyed us, put us on ships. What is his biblical origin in the Bible? Do you know? No. 
Okay, let's go to Genesis. Now, what we're going over is very basic, it's very yeah. rudimentary. Mm -hmm. And as you watch the program, your listeners, write down the scriptures, okay? And check it out for yourself. In the book of Genesis, there was two people named Isaac and Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Rebecca got pregnant. When Rebecca got pregnant, she was having trouble with her birth. And she went before the Lord, and the Lord told her why she's having trouble in her womb. Genesis 25, let's start up at 22. 22. Genesis 25, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If I be pregnant, why am I having trouble? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. So the Lord said, two nations are in your womb, Rebecca. Remember, Genesis means the beginning. Yeah. In Genesis, he created all nations. So now he says, you got two nations that I'm going to use to be covered earth. Watch this. Go ahead. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people. Two manner of people means two different types. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shall be separated from thy bowels. So, go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Whichever boy comes up first, he's going to be a servant to the younger boy. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Were they identical? They, they didn't say that. It said two manner of people, yeah, so meaning two different types. Yeah, so so what do they call that? Yeah. When you're not identical, you are what? You are fraternal. Yeah. Fraternal yeah. twins. Yeah. Okay. okay. Verse 25. And the first. The first boy that's going to be a servant. Came out red all over like in hairy garment. Well, that's not you and me. So now, let's think about it. Red all over like a hairy garment. You ever see so-called white people in the sun? Yep. What color do they get? They get red, yeah. They get very red. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. You notice they didn't mention Jacob's color? Why out of the two boys, they only said Esau was red, but they did not mention Jacob. That's because Jacob looked like everybody else on the planet from the time of Adam. Yeah. Get that in Genesis 2, 7. What did Adam look like? I look at movies and I see have Adam as a red man, a Caucasian. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? Watch what Genesis says. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Yeah, brown. That's right. You got some dust right there in that ground, yep, that, that pot right there. Right. <laughs> so exactly. So the soil in the earth is from ranges from dark brown to a light brown. Adam was a dark-skinned man. That's what read it again. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Gave Adam the Lord's understanding. And man became a living soul. So from that time, up until Genesis 25, everyone looked the same. Didn't you read about Esau being born? Moses, who's writing this, goes, that first boy that came out is red all over like a hair. He was different than everybody else. Yeah. These are the ones we love so dearly. Watch the blessing on Esau. Because Jacob, I mean, I, uh, Isaac God was getting old. His sons were about to inherit their blessings for longevity, their racial blessings. Mm. When we, I just want to read about Esau's blessing because Jacob supplanted the best blessing. His mama said, where are sheep, uh, sheep uh, what do you say? Not sheep, uh, lamb, goat, goat skin, go in and trick your daddy. And he said, mama, I might be cursed. The mother said, you ain't going to be cursed. Just go do what I said. So yeah. Jacob tricked his dad in getting the best blessing. Now Esau comes in crying because he didn't get the big blessing. Watch what his blessing is. Genesis chapter 27 verse 38. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So he says to Esau, your dwelling, meaning where, you, where your descendants live, shall be the fatness of the earth, meaning the best places on earth they shall live. Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. The dew of heaven means they're going to be everywhere. Yeah. But let's see, how are they going to inherit the best places on earth? Go ahead. And by the sword shalt thou live. And how did they get these islands? 
By the sword. By the yeah. sword. How'd they get America? By the sword. Every place they got, they got by war. No voting. No uh, dem no democratic uh, uh, process. process at all. All by war. What are we reading? Bible prophecy. Now, you might not be convinced yet that that's the white guy, the white man. Let's go to the book of Obadiah. You remember, you know history a little bit? Yeah, yeah, of course. What happened in 1969? Very famous event. 1969. 1969, it was the first thing ever done in the world. Not landing on the moon? Ah, what did they say when they landed on the moon? They said the Americans were the first. Um, when, they, when Armstrong, I believe it was, uh -huh. landed on the moon. And what they say was a, a cry, a battle cry. The something has landed. You don't remember? No. I'll tell you in a minute. Let's read Obadiah. Yeah. Obadiah, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Edom is the family name of Esau. When you read Genesis 25, as you read down, verse 30 tells you his name was called Edom as well. Edom, E-D-O-M, means red. Red people. Yeah. Okay. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. God made the Edomites small among the people. God despise. A lot of people hate the Edomites. Go ahead. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. The Edomites are very prideful. Th thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. The word Caucasian, do you know where it comes from? Caucasian. Caucasian, yeah. Wait, wait, it came from, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm losing it here because yeah. I'm into so many things. When you look at a map, you have the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Mm -hmm. That's where the word Caucasian comes from. It's the clefts of rocks. Yeah. So it's a thou that dwellest in the clefts of rocks. Originally, they dwelt in Mount Sierra, which, which was a range of mountains. During the Middle Ages, they moved towards Russia and called themselves Caucasians, the Caucasus Mountains. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't? That's true. Yeah. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, uh -huh. that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Esau would say, who can bring me down? Who can conquer me? Yeah, they possibly have. Yeah. Right. Watch this. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What's the symbol of America? The eagle. The eagle. What was the symbol of Rome during the time of Christ? The eagle. Yeah. The eagle. Though, read that again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Ooh, wait a minute. And though Edom would set their nest among the stars. When they landed on the moon in what year? 1969. They said the eagle has landed. The eagle, yeah, that's right. That's it. Right. The, so what are we reading? Bible prophecy. This was written thousands upon thousands of years ago, but it only happened in our lifetimes. So now, because we've been dumbed down by Christianity, we read these things and go, I don't know what this is talking about. Because we really believe that the man who feeds us and clothes us, that we believe he loves us. God says, no, this man is your enemy. We have not come to that realization yet. Now, you may say to yourself right now, that's the old, you, brother, that's the Old Testament. Let me show you what the Apostle Paul said in the New Testament. Now, you and I spoke about John 3.16, right? Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world. Now, the, the general thought is that God loves everybody, right? Yep. Romans 9.13, let's see what Paul says. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, stop. So the world of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, is explain who he loves. Read that again. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. So the world God loves is the world of Jacob. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But Esau have I hated. So the common thought with Christians, God don't hate nobody. That means they've never read the Bible. Anytime you hear a black man or black woman say God don't hate, they've never read the Bible. They've been Christianized by their enemies. You understand? Mm -hmm. What are we reading? The New Testament. Now, it don't end there. It don't end there. Get, you may say to yourself, that's just Esau. Maybe it's just him and not the descendants. Watch. Paul was quoting the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. That's the quote. Let's see if the quote means just Esau, the individual, or the people. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel. Read verse 4. Read verse 4. 
Whereas Edom say it. Wait, who are we talking about? Edom, yeah. Edom is a so-called white man. Yeah. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. They came and rebuilt during the Renaissance. Renaissance means rebirth. Yeah. They mm -hmm. rebuilt everything. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Mm -hmm. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. They shall call the Edomites the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. And the people whom the Lord has... You know what indignation means? Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, indignation. Hate. Yes. And the people God hates forever. Your church ministers will never read that to you. So it didn't say each sort of individual. It said the people. That means I don't care how cute they look to you. It could be little Johnny, Laura, oh, look at little cute little Edom, my baby. God says, I hate this people. These are the people that destroyed my people. And God set all that up. We, we, we're going to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to continue. I don't even think we're going to take calls, but we're going to continue with this. Yes, sir. Because this is it. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Listen, what you're saying is the truth, huh? And I had this argument with people because there's a guy who's saying, my God wouldn't destroy people. But God says, when you when you do my people, and he referred to them as my people. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. This loving God who so loved the world, why would he get his people through the water? He opened the water for them, mm -hmm. but he destroyed those other people. Right. He because took us through the water. That was you and me. <laughs> That's right. You know? Then secondly, look all the plagues he put on the people of Egypt because right. they would not let his people go. There you go. And there he made it clear, these are my people. That's right. And I kept hammering that. That's right. God didn't, what was God doing? He, he started to say, these are my people. And I said, and who are those people? Whose people are they? Yeah, exactly. Second Ezra 6. That's right. Good point. Excellent. So this, this gospel has never been taught. We've been deceived for so long. You, 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 you open a can of worms. <laughs> because, no, it is there, you know, and we know it, but we, we euphemize it and we, we retranslate it mm -hmm. to, to, to dress it up. To dress it up to make yeah. it comfortable for us. Yeah, that's what our people do. But it is clear here yeah, mm -hmm. because you're coming with, with the facts and. and, and I'm going to look at the, re the repair yes. of this and I'm going to know don't all but because God doesn't, he's saying, listen, man, no, I don't love everybody. That's right. I despise you. Mm -hmm. He created it like that. When you write a movie, you write a movie, you have good guys and bad guys. Yeah. This is the greatest story of all time. God has good guys, which are the Israelites, and he has bad guys. And this time is Esau. During the time of Moses, it was Egypt. During the time of Daniel, it was Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He always says good guys. We always the good guys, but right now we in we in captivity because we broke his laws. That's why we're here in this captivity. You understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to accept calls? If it's up to you, I don't care. We can we could Hey, if you gonna replay this, this I'm telling you, it will be an eye opener for the people. And if you get a phone call from the government, don't worry, you'll be all right. <laughs> I'm always all right. I, I. Uh, God got you. Don't worry. Last thing I fear, I, I do And tell her don't be people. mad in there. No, 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 no. She is not mad. No, no. When we teach the, the first ones to get angry, women they don't. Most women get angry when they hear this. Not my Jesus. You, you no, know, but you know what? Because they say, wait a minute, wait a minute. All the things they instilled on me all these years, you coming out to 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 change that? Mm -hmm. I got to deal with this change. That's right. And it's not that they don't believe or anything, but they're looking at, uh, how am I going to deal with this change? Yes. How do I go and tell the child that I've been telling God loves all of us? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see, see that little white child you, you're playing with? <laughs> God doesn't really love him. That's anymore. right. He loves you, but mm -hmm. oh, that is the change we can't deal with. Mm. That's right. And you know, we always take the easier way out. Yes. Right? Instead of going and, and dealing with this, exactly. let me just put it under the carpet and... You know, there you somebody go. else probably would have to deal with it, but not me. Well, that's why the Lord's raising up. He said in the last days, he's going to raise up the elect, the 144,000. 12,000 of each tribe of Israel. Yeah. In Revelation 7, he says that. So, it's getting done. You know, so, and we're not the only ones. There's a lot of brothers teaching what you're hearing today for the first time all over the country. We're back.
Welcome back to the program. I have Captain Isaac and um, it's pastor, right? Bishop. Bishop, Bishop, sorry. <laughs> Bishop, I, I got so, I mean, you have just put like 300 years of information in my brain in less than 30 minutes. So mm -hmm. it takes time to dissect that and to, now there are going to be the doubters who are saying, oh, what craziness this guy coming? God can't possibly hate anybody. Mm -hmm. Way he's just taking segments of the Bible and misinterpreting it. Have you been prepared to deal with that sort of confrontation? Oh yes, very prepared. We have brothers on the street right now teaching out some. We're gonna, the, well, I don't know, where they at today? Where the Bloods and the Crips are? Y'all got Bloods and Crips on this island, I heard? Yeah. They're gonna be transformed, don't worry. The Word of God is gonna change these the criminal mind to the Israelite mind. That's what the Bible does. It's going to change everyone. Okay, well, we're gonna open up the lines. We don't have a lot, a lot of time. But we're going to open up the lines for a few calls, um, 542-2580, or 542-2764, or 543-2141. If you're calling, make your point quickly, get to the point, make it quickly, and we will allow um, the bishop to answer your questions, mm -hmm. okay? If you have any questions. So let's continue where we, we left off. Yes. Um, let me ask, do you guys celebrate Christmas in St. Martin? Yeah, the Christmas. Oh, oh the, the birth of days. Jesus. Yeah. When you read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah, Christmas is, is an ancient pagan custom. God tell, watch what he says in Jeremiah 10, verse 1 through 4. Jeremiah 10, chapter 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. Meaning lies. The customs of the people are lies. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Uh-oh. So it's getting specific. One cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Mm -hmm. They deck it with silver and with gold. Once they cut the tree down, they decorate this tree with silver and gold. Mm -hmm. What holiday is that? Christmas. That's Christmas. Read verse 2 again. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Where did we learn that heathen custom from? From the white guy. That's right. From the friendly neighborhood white man. He taught the slaves to set up a Christmas tree. And they said it's in honor of the birth of Jesus. So number one, God says don't set up a tree and decorate it with silver and gold. Now he continues on. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move not. So that the tree don't fall down or yeah. walk away. So they say that's the birth of Jesus, right? Ask any, you got pastors on this island? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Open challenge to any pastor listening. Prove to your congregation that Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, by the way, was born December 25th. Call in, open your Bible and read and look for the scripture. It's not there. There's one reference to the birth of Christ. It's in the book of Luke. Chapter 2, verse 40, down. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 2 and verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Talking about Jesus the Christ. Filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So when he was 12, they took him to keep the Passover. So it's telling you, it's letting you know, reference that Christ was 12 around the time of Passover. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you get an age and a, 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 point in, uh, a point of a high holy day to let you know when his date of birth is. It's around that time. You understand? Mm -hmm. But nowhere do you read about Christmas. There's one winter holiday. Give me John 10. There's one winter holiday that the Most High God ordained. It's in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. Okay? You won't find Christmas for us to celebrate in the Bible. Come on. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So the Feast of Dedication, I guarantee you, very few pastors can explain. What feast is that? That feast is found in a book called the Apocrypha. When you read the book of Maccabees, 
which was outlawed in Jamaica for centuries, they now just allowed to be a renegade because the slaves would use this to re cause rebellion on the island. The M book of Maccabees is also recorded historically in the book of Daniel chapter 11, where it talks about the rededication of the temple. Uh, Daniel wrote it uh, as a metaphor, okay? But the book of Maccabees goes through it historically. What happened with the Greeks came in power? Because when you read the Bible, you get to the book of Malachi, and it was the, the, um, the Persians and Medes in power. After Malachi, you got Matthew. During the time of Matthew, you have the Romans in power. Mm -hmm. What happened to the Greek history? This book was pulled out of the Bible. All Bibles had the Apocrypha in it. They all had it. But it was in the 1700s they said take it out. Because the blacks are using it to cause slave revolts. So he took it out. So now you are dumbed down. In, that was in the 1700s? 1700s. Early 1700s. Yes. I, I thought it was a little earlier than that. but anyway. Well, it could have been. Um, so like around 1660 on up. Yes. Because prior to 1660, like you read about the, the Greek Septuagint, you have the Latin Vulgate. They all had the Apocrypha in it. All of them. Okay, the, but now let me ask you a question. Yes. Because maybe you could clarify. Who decided to take it out? Your friendly neighborhood white man. The Protestant whites took it out. What is the greatest religion on this island here? Which one? I would say the Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. The Romans is the ones that nailed Christ to the cross. They've got to be insane. Okay? Then you got, um, what's that other religion? Seven, you got Seven Day Adventists out here? Yeah. The white woman set that up. Ellen G. White. She started that. There are, you got Jehovah's Witness out here? Yeah. That started by the white man too. Charles T. Charles Taze Russell. We love following white man religions. We love it! But it's to our detriment. Give me Isaiah 30 and 12. Watch this. Watch what God says. Do you vote? Um, in June elections? Yes, during elections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you vote for a president, things of yeah. that nature? You a Democrat, yeah. Republican? What are you? No, no, no. Here on this island, we don't have that. You don't have that. What do you got yeah. here? What do you got? <laughs> Politicians. 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 <laughs> yeah, we, watch we, what, we run for parliament, that sort of okay, thing. Okay, watch what God says. Yeah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. So the problem with our people from the time of Moses, we despise this word. Meaning a law will come out. We'll, I'm not doing that. We won't do nothing the Bible says. Watch this. And trust in oppression. We trust in oppression. When you examine, how do we trust in oppression? Anything oppressive has come from our enemies. Yeah. What the, has he given us that we trust in? We trust in his religions. We trust in his politics. But we never go and seek out the word of God. Because in the, when you read the Bible, there was no separation of church and state. It was one thing. Yeah. King David, you're the prophets. Everyone had to abide by this book. But when our friendly neighborhood white man came in power, he said, no, separate that. Take that Bible, put it somewhere else, and we're going to make our own list of laws. That's what they did. Yeah. And many of their laws are based on the Levitical laws or judicial laws of the Bible. But mm -hmm. most people don't realize that. Yeah, okay. that's true. Most don't. So the, 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 the Bible is our history. This is what we want all your listeners to understand. The Bible is our history. It is not the book of all nations. It was, it was given, it was written by the Israelites for the Israelites. Watch this, Romans 3 and 2. Because I said the Bible is only for the Israelites. Somebody right now may be upset and angry. But I'm approved. Everything I said, I'm approved. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God is the Bible. It was committed to the Jews. We are the Jews, okay? Let me show you some basic color scriptures. Most people don't realize, we read about the color of Esau today, right? This color. We read about the color of Christ, which is Revelation 1, 14, 15. We read about the color of Adam, Genesis 2, 7, correct? Mm -hmm. Let me show you some more. Jeremiah 14, 2. Or what you got, Job 30? What you got? Daniel. Okay, that's fine. Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Yeah, okay. This is about, Daniel sees a vision of the coming Messiah. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body also was like the beryl. A uh, beryl means green. He had on a green garment. Go ahead. And his face as the appearance of lightning. So he had a glow on his face. It was power. When you look at his face, you can see power oh, emanating yeah. from him. Go ahead. And his eyes as lamps of fire. And his arms... Wait, why were his eyes like lamps of fire? Let me see if you remember. 
Um, we spoke about from the um, wine. Yes, very good. And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms. So he looked at Christ's arms and his feet. He looked at his feet like in color. Like in color to polished brass. Meaning brass burned in a furnace. So color is throughout the Bible, but your ministers have been taught by theology schools, either don't teach that or it doesn't mean that. It's those two trains of thought that we've encountered with theology um, professors. Don't teach that, or it doesn't mean that. So if woolly hair doesn't mean woolly hair, what does it mean? Uh, straight and stringy, and with no biblical reference. <laughs> hey, Chandler, I, got, I wish this program was two hours or three hours long today. Yes, sir. Because, like I said, you, you, you brought a lot of new information here, and I say new, because many of us read the Bible and don't read it in this way. Exactly. But if people need more information, mm. how could they get that? They can get in contact with us at our website, www.israelunite.org or call us in the States at 718-303-9655. Do you pay tithes? Yeah. You pay tithes. Most of the people on this island pay tithes. Get Acts 4. Let me show you about the tithe money. Acts 4 and 30. This will solve the problem of not just this island, but our people in America and where Britain, wherever. Watch what the apostles of Christ did with the offerings that came. Acts 4, verse 32. Yes. On down. Acts 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. And neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Watch this. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. Here it comes. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses. They had abundance of lands and houses in their ownership. Mm -hmm. Sold them. They sold them. And brought the prices of the things and that were sold. They brought the money of the prices of the things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. Let's see what they did with that money. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Do your pastors do that? No. <laughs> These pastors are the devil, the Bible speaks of. Meaning, when I say that, I mean they're following Britain, Rome, Dutch customs, that's what they're doing, so that they themselves can get rich. But the people suffer in poverty. Like we came off the boat, I see poverty everywhere. It should not be so because they all guarantee you, nine out of ten of them give 10% of tithes and offerings. They all got to give it to the pastor for a blessing from God. The money is supposed to be given to the poor of our people, those that believe, because that's what Paul and them did, Peter and them did. Yeah. We are supposed to do that. You need help with your rent? Here, go, bam. You need help with your car? No, bam, here. You are supposed to help the people, not live fat and lovely, and God's people suffer. We're the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. We're not Negroes. We're the Israelites. Is that? Yep. We are all supposed to be provided for and taken care of. Every last one of us. Our children shouldn't be lack of food and clothing. When you, we give you 10% every week, are you kidding me? Go ahead, talk. <laughs> We've come to the end of the program, unfortunately. But like I said, um, people, um, you can still get more information by visiting their website. And gentlemen, I know you're just stopping in and you're leaving this afternoon. Yes. I would have loved to have you on the program again sometime. Um, but I want to thank you for taking the short time you have in St. Martin for coming here and disbursing this information. Oh, praise And us. I hope it is not the last. It's not the last, believe me. Lord willing. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. We'll be back. And we're going to see you. <laughs> you better see me. <laughs> okay. So again, I want to thank you. Welcome to St. Martin. Thank you. And I hope to have you back sometime. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, the program had to come to an end. And uh, we've got the news standing by. Okay. So if you can quickly just say, you know, wrap up your words. Yes. Isaac, you want to wrap up the words? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Most High and His Son, Jesus the Christ, the Black Messiah. Um, and we hope that everyone, if you need more info, you can go on to www.israelunite.org. That's www.israelunite.org. The time is short. We must repent and prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank Amen. you.
Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.